Hello, crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to this Brother Scan and Cut Tips and Tricks tutorial where you will learn to cut out and color stamped images featuring Easter Bunny by Stampin' Up. This is really timely because, well, not only because Easter's coming, but for another reason, this punch, well, this is in the U.S. market because we do have other markets around Europe and South Pacific. But this punch has sold out and it's not gonna be back in the market or in our store until May. So that will be after Easter. So, you know, what a great time to just have a scan and cut, right? And you were only gonna be able to cut out one bunny anyway with the punch. It wasn't like you were able to cut out all the bunnies with the punch. You were only able to cut out this bunny with the punch. So we're gonna go ahead and scan because a lot of you already have the punch. We're not gonna scan this one because there is a punch to go with it, but it's going to be the same process. We're going to scan this little guy and this little guy, and we're going to color them. And we're going to do a little trick with the eggs because when I cut these out earlier, only one egg, no, two eggs came out. Let me show you what that looks like. I have a bunch of blends here for coloring. See how my little eggs came out? Because I forgot to use my own tip and trick that I teach. Well, actually, I was also experimenting. But this was, you. we need to attach the eggs with the pencil to get them to cut out. And we'll go ahead and cut out a carrot. Uh, we'll go ahead and cut out a bird and some flowers because the examples I'm gonna show you have birds and flowers and bunnies. I made two cards and a treat. And I'm gonna be making some more things during my Easter Bunny Workshop series this month on my YouTube channel. All right, so where is this guy? I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, so we need to show you where this little guy is in the catalog, even if you can't get it anyhow. Well, you can still get the stamp set, because we do make we make the stamp sets in the U.S., so you can actually get the stamp set, page 52 of this catalog. See, so this is still available, even if you can't get the punch right now. The stamp set's $19, and there's some cute samples with it. And I'm working on it all month long on my channel. I've already created a bunch of projects, which I'll show you later, that don't use the Scan and Cut. And then I created three that do use the Scan and Cut. There's my store. All right, so let's get stamping. I already have these mounted. These are mounted onto blocks already because I've been using them. I haven't even cleaned up yet. I usually wash everything. We'll do, we'll do sentiments. So we need this bunny. I mounted it sort of at an angle on a stamping block D. We need this bunny, and just so the ear doesn't get cut off, I had to mount that at an angle on a stamping block D. We will stamp the carrot that's on a stamping block G. Okay, we have a little butterfly. I, I forgot, did I cut out the butter? I think I forgot to stamp the butterfly earlier, so we'll see how the butterfly comes out. We'll do the little bird. All right, if you're not getting good results, possibly you might not be using basic white Stampin' Up! cardstock. Not the thick stuff, but the regular stuff. I'm hearing all the time, I'm getting questions all the time. How come my things don't come out like yours? Or I'm having trouble with my paper ripping and this, that, and the other thing. Well, if you want the same results as me, use the same products as me. I'm using Memento Black Ink to color with the stamping blends because it doesn't run. When you use alcohol markers with this hybrid ink, it doesn't run, okay? If I'm gonna be stamping sentiments, I like using Knight of Navy. I'm gonna be using basic white cardstock. I mean, use the same products, try that, and then and then see if you get the same results. Also take my courses where I delve deeper into topics. You see what I just did? I just touched the, okay, let me, let me, tilt, let me tilt this a little bit like so, so you can see that. So I went, I, you could either, if your stamp is big like this, you could stamp it, you could ink it upside down like so. You could take your memento ink and tap it, tap, tap, and ink it upside down. Or you could try to get the stamping pad to you know, to, to actually cover it. So you could also, but then if you do that, you might not cover the whole bunny. Oh, I love when my stamps come out, see? I mean, just, you could tap, tap, tap. Okay, so I'm just gonna do, we'll just do one more because it's inked up. So much for having a flat table. This table is not flat at all. <laughs> not only is, the, oh, you know what? It's not that, it's not the table. This was under it. All right, that was, that was under it. All right, so that's good. We have that one covered. We're gonna put that little stamp over there. Now let's stamp this a bunny. Let me see if I can move the scan and cut out of the way for a moment. Put this, okay, better, better. Okay, tap, tap, tap. This one will cover. Now, usually I stamp onto this mat first, but the thing is, I just, you've been using these stamps. 
for my trial run. Okay. Okay, we did a couple of those bunnies. They came out great. Nothing needed. No pencil trick for those bunnies. No extra tips and tricks. But for the eggs, let's take this off so you can see. So I'm going to stamp the eggs. And there is a little trick for the eggs. We need to use... Ooh, I should have stamped that one first. Maybe the ink. Let's see if there's something else under here. Nope, just, just my sticky notes. Seems like it's not very flat, but I usually use like a silicone mat under there, but I'm not using that right now because I have a whole big pile of paper, so I was hoping it would make it flat enough. That's good enough. Good enough. Let's do that again and this again. So what I'm going to try to do now is attach a little line with a pencil so that these cut out as one. So I kind of want to kind of do that. So something like that, just because I want them to kind of go up there, cut it out. Go down there, cut it out, make an outline. I'm not sure about this one because it's so light, but we'll still try it. That way we don't get that one lone egg that doesn't cut out. So whenever you don't have a full solid image, always use the pencil trick to enclose any gaps in your images. All right, let's do the carrot. The carrot's very straightforward. I mean, it doesn't get any easier than the carrot, and that's easy to color as well. Okay, so we'll make a few carrots. All right, let's do the butterfly. I didn't do that one earlier. I forgot about the butterfly. Here, let's just take the let's take the bird off of there. And we'll do a butterfly. Okay, a couple butterflies. Let's take the butterfly off and stick it with the carrot. And we'll stick the bird on there. Yes, these are all part of this stamped set, stamp set. Super cute. Some birds. The birds and the bees and the flowers and the trees. All right, we'll put the flowers on there, take off the eggs, stick them on this block. This is just sticking them on another block so we don't lose them. Tap, tap, tap. Okay, that one didn't come out good. That one didn't come out good. I wonder why it's not inking. Oh, probably because of my, probably because my, like I said, my thing's not flat. All right, so. It's like, it's like something is, awry oh no it looks fine on there sure it looks fine on there why is it not okay that one's better we want we want some of these to come out better so we're going to do one more all right goody goody now we have everything we only needed the trick for that one and now i'll teach you about putting an outline distance around them if you're new to the scan and cut we always start from the beginning in my tutorials if you've been here before, you'll learn something new, like maybe how to decorate a card or how to, how to um, color the bunny in a different way that you might not be used to. So even if you're like, oh, I've done this many times, I've cut out stamped images, maybe there's something, a tip and trick. Okay, so for example, one of the things that I like to show about is the outline distance. So putting a little bit of a white line around the edge. And I'll talk about turning out my light and how that affects your scanning because I have a huge light now and it's kind of beaming right into the side here. All right, so let's do this. Let's take the bunnies and attach them to the mat. Now, you don't want to cover up these lines. These, these lines are registration marks and they're needed for scanning. So you don't want to cover those up. I'm going to go ahead and use some of my low-tech tape though. I'm going to tape the edges of the paper because my Paper's not very sticky. I mean, my mat's not very sticky. So I'm just using some low-tech tape on here. It doesn't rip my paper later. But if I was going to cover up these, they wouldn't be too bad because it's, it's semi-translucent. But still, I like to just sort of not cover up the mat. I mean, not cover up the registration marks. All right, so good. Now I'm going to load the mat, and then I'm going to pull my machine closer. So you can see everything that's going on. All right, and I'll tell you how I loaded the mat. And I'll say hello to you when it's, when it's um, scanning and cutting. All right, I'm getting rid of this paper, this thing. These are just some, some grid papers. I wonder if, I, I wonder if my tripod will go higher. I don't think it will go much higher. Soon I'm gonna have some more equipment. 
I already purchased, I mean, that I'm going to be using, like, some of my equipment will be, arrive in my shipment. All right, there we go. So, I'm going to turn off the overhead light in just a moment, but let's see. Okay, so this is where we are at. It's going to get dark. Okay, it's going to get dark, but you can see that better. Here's where we're at. We're starting at the beginning, but where, where we're at, meaning I already did, what I just did is load the mat. So I want to tell you how I did that in case you're new to the scan and cut. I loaded the mat using this button here. So attach your stamped images and load the mat. Then you're going to select scan. This is always when you're cutting stamped images. Now you're going to select direct cut. Why direct cut? Because we're not saving anything. We're directly cutting out the bunnies, the carrots, the flowers, the eggs. We're directly cutting them out right in the place where they're at. We're not scanning them. Now, if we were to do, and I'll probably do a separate tutorial on that, scan to cut data. One, one reason we would want to use scan to cut data is if we wanted the silhouette of the bunny. Well, maybe this one's better. This one's not a good silhouette. This, this one's a good silhouette, and this is a good silhouette. So say we wanted to make a shaker card, and we wanted the shape of this bunny only, and we wanted to poke that through a window. of. We wanted this to be the window in a card. Then we would use scan to cut data because we would need the shape of the stamped image because we'd have to save it and place it where we want it. So I think I'll do a separate tutorial on that. Let's just do direct cut right now because we're going to directly cut out these stamped images. And then next it's asking where do you want to save them? We're going to save them to our machine because this is a temporary storage or it, you could save them to the cloud. That means like to the, to the Canvas workspace, which is the software. Okay, Canvas workspace. Now, now we're going to say this is the area of the paper. So do you have a 12 by 12 or, tw or 12 by 12 paper? Yes, I do. But right now, even my bunnies, they're almost all sitting up in the six inch area, but they're not quite all in the six inch area, right? So I'm going to go ahead and scan the six by 12 or 12 by six because some of them fall beneath the six inch line. But to save time, you could, if your scanning area was just the top of your mat, you could save time and just scan the top of your mat. But let's go ahead and scan the whole 12 by 12. And we're going to always scan in black and white, even if we had colored these first, which I don't recommend. I color them later. But even if you did, oh, because there's nice, well-defined black lines around them, always use black and white recognition mode. It just works much better. Now it's telling us to start. So it's going to just scan in everything. And notice I turned out that light that was that giant ring light that you saw reflecting all over the screen. I don't need to keep it off the whole time. I only need to keep it off while I'm scanning. Once it's done scanning, you can go ahead and turn your light back on and use it for crafting, see? But I'm, I'm not going to for a second because I think it's easier for you to see the screen without it. But what I'm saying is right now, it doesn't matter anymore if it's on. It only mattered to turn it off while you're scanning. The light above you, directly above you, straight up in the ceiling does not matter. It's because my ring light is, is like going like sideways into the scanner like that. That's why I had to turn it off. It's so bright and it's going sideways. All right, so now what do we need to do? We need to make the outline distance around the bunny and we need to get rid of any unwanted bits. All right, so here's, here's why we, we want to make a little outline around it. Okay, so we need to, first of all, get, let's select the areas we don't want. So meaning we're going to get rid of all these unwanted. See, see all that? It got scanned in. We don't want any of that. It's all a hot mess. We don't want that. We don't want the edges. So you're going to, that's why I never put the paper too close to the edge of the mat. Now we're going to go like this and we're going to get rid of things like that way. All right. Now, if that didn't really work and we didn't get rid of everything, we can also ignore object size. So you can also ignore some of these stray bits, but don't ignore them too big because you'll be ignoring the very things that you're trying to cut out. So just, you can ignore the small, tiny bits. So it won't spend time cutting them. Now we can click OK. And now we got rid of things a couple ways. The other way we can get rid of things is by editing. We can go edit, and now we can toggle. the toggle. This is a toggle button, meaning toggling amongst all the items on the screen. We can trash the ones we don't want. Notice I'm going to toggle back there. See what I'm doing? I'm getting rid of that little straight bit up there. That's not part of my... If, if I don't get rid of it, it's not part of what I want to scan. And if I don't get rid of it, it's going to take up time. And when it goes to cut out, I'm going to have to wait for it to cut out. This little sliver of paper, one more... A uh, point of failure, as we say in software. Like, we don't want any extra points where there could be an error, right? So, like, it's one more place where the, where the 
where the actual machine could shake or whatever. So we just get rid of any extra things we don't want to cut out. Now these would cut out a little bit messy because there's we didn't do the outline distance yet. These flowers need a little bit of an outline distance. So you're going to see how that's this is forgiven, meaning it's forgiving when you put this outline distance around them. It gets rid of all those extra little tiny bits that was trying to cut. So now it cuts out like more like an outline like or, or like a blob, I call it. Like sort of it takes all the little tiny lines and turns them into like a wider blob. So you want an outline distance of 0 0.04. That's how you get that white outline around your your little stamped images, okay? And I think it looks cool. It's kind of like the dies that we use. That's what you do when you're die cutting. You know, you, you put the little outline distance around things. That's the way the dies are shaped. It just looks nice. So 0 0.04. All right, so let's do this. Let's do it. Let's click OK. And let's click OK. The eggs got, do you see how the eggs cut out in one shape? So that's a good thing. You're going to select Cut. And then you're going to select Start. And it's going to take somewhere more than two minutes, less than three. We'll go ahead and watch what it's doing. And I also kind of give it a rub. And then I can say hello. I always give it a rub because, you know, the mats aren't very sticky and whatnot. Oh, lots of you guys came in before I even got here today. Sorry for making you wait a long time. Uh, just uh, sometimes I announce my videos and then something happens in my household and I just can't start exactly. I don't have an exact time for these to start, Lisa. Uh, or Phil, you, It's just when I announce it. So you'll see me announce these videos in the Scan and Cut user group, in my Paper Chef Facebook page, my team. I have team members called the Paper Chefs. So that's my team, my Stampin' Up! team. And then I have a VIP group called the Paper Chefs VIPs. I announce it in four places. Facebook, VIP group, Stampin' Up! team, Brother Scan and Cut user group. When I announce it, then I go live like maybe less than five minutes later. But until you see an announcement, if, if YouTube tells you about it and you didn't see an announcement yet, it means that I've I prepared my video, but it doesn't mean I prepared the video, but I'm not going live yet until I announce I'm going live. Preparing meaning I took the... Uh, the, the thumbnail. All right, so let's do this. Lisa, okay, Lala's Crafts is Phyllis. Hello. Okay. Midge, hello. You found tonight's class. Good, good, good. Sheila, hello. Okay, she's cutting these tomorrow. And I'm getting a lot of these ready too for my Sheila. We're all doing the Easter Bunny workshop. So these are going to help us get more ideas for Easter Bunny crafts. So by the time I do part three of the Easter Bunny workshop, I'm going to use some of these designs and some other things like on the die cut. So, okay, nice to see you and good, good, good. And hello, Betty and Shaz and Terry and Linda from Stamp Cut and Create. And nice to see you again, Joy. Haven't seen you in a while. Okay, hello, Melissa from Texas and Darlene, Melody. Hey, Joy got the stamp and the punch before they ran out. Good. I kept telling everybody. It's going on low inventory. Nobody would listen. The next day, my customers were like, do you have any extra? I'm like, no, do you think I could sit around with extra bunny punches? Well, actually, I, I typically would sit around with extra bunny punches, in an, but I didn't have any extra bunny punches. But they, they did run out. When it says low inventory, that's usually like a day later. That means they're out of this. Hello, Mary and Shirley and Rose, Gloria and Lynn. And Yvonne and Anna from Victoria, Australia. Do you need the pencil trick for the bird's feet? Well, we will find out. Okay, no, the answer is Mary Westling asked, do we need the pencil trick for the bird's feet? No. Watch what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my light. All right, turning on the light. We're ready for th some light for the rest of this. You're going to go up here, and you're going to unload the mat. Now, if you wanted to cut another outline, let me just show you. If you wanted to cut, like, a bigger outline around the bunnies, which we're not doing for this craft, you could go back. You could go back and add another outline of 0 0.08 and add another wider outline around your bunny and make another layer of paper. I'm not doing that today because I'm not doing that for these crafts. But if you wanted to, that's how. But then once you do that, then you unload the mat. So after you've done all your layers and everything, unload the mat. Okay, now I can tilt my camera down because we're going to be doing some coloring. All right, so no, we did not need the pencil trick for the bird's feet. Thank you for sharing this video, Darlene. That was nice. Sharing is caring. Okay, give it a like, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. So see that? That was there's the bird's feet. You don't need the bun, you don't need the um, pencil trick for the bird's feet. But the pencil trick worked well for the eggs. 
And so now what you want to do, I'm just going to put those onto the magazine here, onto the catalog. So you're going to erase the pencil marks. I do that right away. I use a white eraser. Don't use the eraser on the back of the pencil because it leaves a red mark. So I'm going to use the eraser, so the white eraser. So now my eggs have cut out in a little bunch, and that's better because now I have an odd number because you're going to see on my crafts that I have an even number, and I'm always telling you odd numbers of embellishments, right? But then that's, you know, that's just what happened for me. I didn't want to go back and cut out one single egg. Well, I did cut out the egg with scissors, see? I cut out the single eggs that were left on my page with scissors because I didn't use the pencil trick when I first tried. Oh, see how I use, this is how I use my extra tape. I just do things sometimes without even telling you what I'm doing. So these, you can, you can either bend the mat to get these off the mat, right? It's sticky, or you can just pop them. I mean, they're going to pop right off because you can, use your, you can use your spatula if you're new with the scan and cut and your mat's actually sticky, but that's not the case with my mat. I can just pull them right off. It's not even sticky enough to even have to use the spatula. But we would erase all these, so we're going to finish erasing those. And we have all the bunnies, and they all came out cute. Cute, cute. So did the flowers, even the ones that were light. And I'm still going to use those because you're going to color them anyway with Stampin' Blends. Or I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a little trick for coloring with the watercolor pencils and using a blender pen with that for the small carrot. Okay, because I didn't have the light color of the pumpkin pie. All right, my mat is out of here, so we have more room. Okay, let's do this. Let's get these. I still need to finish saying hello to you guys. Okay, what color blends do you use for early espresso? No, not a, there's not every color. We don't have every color of the blends. But we have every single color of the Stampin' Right markers. So you use, when you don't have a blend for a certain color, you can use like the natural tone blends if you want to try to make a lot of, you know, use the neutrals and all. But it then, you've, or use the Stampin' Right markers, or use the watercolor pencils, which I'm going to use today, and some blends. Or don't use that color, like, on your design. Like, I mean, if you, not every, we're not going to have every color blend because, like, for instance, we don't have a crushed curry blend. And it bums me out. But then I got a bumblebee blend, and it was very close. So I don't get rid of my old blends, even though bumblebee is a retired color, color of my shirt, kind of. So it's, it's like, it, it's close enough to crushed curry, and I'm just going to use it because it's the closest thing. And then what you do is you could take, like, a little watercolor pencil that is crushed curry, to kind of go over the next layer with it on there. And then, then you'll get the exact color match or pretty much a better color match when you do. Like when you have the real color in a watercolor pencil and a similar color in a blend, you can use a combination of both, which I'm going to kind of show you. So let me, I just want to get rid of my eraser marks. All right. There we go. I'm just going to grab that paper again to color. All right. I just want to get all this stuff, put it all in here. Shut my lid here. Okay, and then I can make more room. I made this in vinyl. There's a tutorial on how to personalize your scan and cut here on my channel. Just, just look up personalize your scan and cut with vinyl. And I teach about vinyl in my courses. The Winter Projects course, for example, we did, we did vinyl on the jars. And then like on another course, we might have done vinyl on a cup. So like it's just the same, same concept. All right, let's see. Let's do, we're going to do Fresh Freesia set of bunnies. Then we'll do a balmy blue set of bunnies. So for this bunny, I like to color this bigger bunny in the dark Fresh Freesia first on the outside. And we're going to just take the dark Fresh Freesia and go like that. And just kind of go around the whole outside. Now, I like to also use a combination of pale papaya because I thought the Fresh Freesia was kind of dark. So I used the pale papaya as well. Yes, and pale papaya is kind of an orangey color, but it look, looked kind of cool with it. It's what I used to make my feet lighter. So I just colored in the whole feet dark, but then I went over it with the pale papaya. You'll see. You'll see how I did that. All right, something like that. You're doing the dark. Then you're going to take your light blend, and you're going to just take your lights, take the brush side. Don't color the eyes. You're going to save the eyes for balmy blue. We're going to use balmy blue. And you're just sort of circular motion, and you're gonna, you're blending the light and dark together in a circular motion around the edges, and then where they're not touching, you just sort of, or you can flick it like that with the little, like flick like that. Okay, so that's that one, and then I'm gonna take the pale papaya, 
I just had all the markers right here, remember? They were all right here at the beginning of the video. Where did they all go? I'm bringing them all back. <laughs> These were all the colors I was using. All right, so we're gonna do the balmy blue bunny. I'm so excited that my, I just did an unboxing last night of a, a wreath. And then this new wreath kit, wreaths, wreaths of bloom, blooms of, wreaths of blooms. Anyway, then I'm taking the pale papaya and I'm doing this to make the, the arms and the bunny a little, uh, belly a little bit lighter and the ears a little bit lighter and the feet. And that came out cool. And it blends their alcohol markers. So they go, they come out better over time. Like it looks a little funny now, but then it, it blends together better over time. And then I take the balmy blue into the eyes. Anyway, these just came in. And I, it's like a dream using, when you're so used to using dried out markers, and then you get like these new, this is balmy blue. I'm going to use, that was fresh freesia, pale papaya, and that was fresh freesia dark, fresh freesia light, and then followed by light pale papaya to bring out the color of the bunny. And then I'm going to do a little bit of dots for the in the blue on the feet after I did that pale papaya. So that's how I colored that bunny. Now I'm going to take... The dark, and I'm going to go like this is the dark balmy blue, and I'm going to do this. And there's no right or wrong way to do this. This is just how I do it. So you could just be like, I do it a different way. Okay, cool, do it a different way. But this is just how I do it, and I just don't want anybody to be afraid of the blends. They really make your things come out fantastic. Now, why the blends? Because, or why the, whatever, the... Why the watercolor pencils? Why our Stampin' Rate markers? Well, because all our products coordinate. The designer series paper, the colors of our ink, the cardstock. It's why we do this. It's like why we everything looks so cool with Stampin' Up. It's because all our stuff coordinates the colors. So that's why I like to use colors that coordinate. You're going to see I'm using Dandy Designs as the paper for my crafts today. So that's why I came up with these colors. They, they go with Dandy Designs pretty much. See, I'm just using circular motion, making the light little bunny tail. Here comes Peter Cottontail, hopping down the bunny trail. Okay, and then I just do that again to sort of get rid of that harsh line of dark to light, which is a little zigzag or a little flick. And now the fun part, I got carrots to come me, is the Wink of Stella. I'm not going to color in the eye for that one because I'd have, I would have colored the eye blue, so I'm not going to make the eye blue because the bunny's already blue. So now I'm taking all this Wink of Stella here, and it's a clear glitter brush. I have some nice flow coming out of here. And even though the bunny's not all the way dry yet, it's okay. I'm just going over it with the... Can you see? Shiny, shiny bunny. And we'll do this bunny too. Okay, now we'll do the carrots. And if you don't have the, the carrot, or if you, I mean, if, if you don't have the carrot set, there's, there's a cool carrot set for celebration that you can get for free when you spend $50. So let me show you that free carrot set. That We're gonna use the carrot from Easter Bunny, but there is a free carrot set. And it is called Thanks a Bunch. Just made me think about it when I was talking about carrots. So this goes really well with the Easter Bunny this month too. And it's free with a $50 purchase. Thank you, Andrea. She's saying, don't forget to like the video. Hello, Linda Brooks. Okay, magnet sheets. Yes, you can cut magnet sheets. There's a video on how to cut magnetic sheets. How to make magnets. We made them out of cars on this channel. So just look up how to cut magnets with the scan and cut. Always, I always do how to or tutorial. Look up scan and cut tutorial. Then search for the word paper chef and you'll find several hundred videos from me how to cut out we made car magnets we made flower magnets we cut out magnetic sheets we used the deep cut blade okay hello hello lynn dardine bonnie bonnie also got the bunny punch yes hello maria davona hello all right lynn's lynn's like keeping track of everybody all right <laughs> All right, good, good, good. And Anna, let's see. We are going to do the carrot. So this is where I was talking about the this one. So let's do, and I have this color. Well, that's one we're going to do for the eggs. Okay, let's see. I only had, I didn't have a blend right now with me that's Calypso Coral. So that's why I took out the 
watercolor pencil with Clipso Coral. And now what I'm looking for is the watercolor pencil, and I'm gonna use a combination of a blender pen and a watercolor pencil. All right, here's the watercolor pencil in pumpkin pie. All right, let me see if I can find the box. Oh, I can't find the whole box of watercolor pencils right now, but I did take these two out. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut, take the watercolor pencil because I didn't have a watercolor pencil that was, I only had like the dark, the dark stamp and blend for pumpkin pie and it came out too dark. So now, but the watercolor pencil comes out light. So let me show you what I mean. This, this is, it's not too dark, it's just dark. Okay, so like it's okay, but it's still kind of dark for a carrot. So here is the blend. I, I was like grabbing blends and put them in my luggage before I traveled and I forgot to bring the light pumpkin pie blend. So I think the dark pumpkin pie blend is kind of dark compared to like, because it's going to go with this grain apple green. So what you do is you're going to use the watercolor pencil, but it gets kind of streaky. See, when you use a watercolor pencil, it's kind of streaky. So if you use a blender pen, right, and you go over your watercolor pencil, then it's better than having to use water and it doesn't streak because there's that magic solution inside a blender pen. It's some kind of like sort of, it's wet, but it's like a magical solution. I don't know what it, I don't know exactly what it is. Probably on the ingredients right. See, so I like the lighter one better. So that's the watercolor pencil versus the blend. And then I'm gonna just take the dark, this is called granny apple green. And granny apple green is a dark, I mean, it's a light color green, but it has a dark and it has a light blend. So instead of trying to blend the top of the carrots, I'm just doing the back of one of them dark and the front of the other one dark or light, I should say. So like the opposite, just so you can see how they look and you can just decide on your own which way you want to do it. So we have light granny apple green in the front of that one and light granny apple green in the back of that one. So that's how the carrots look. And now we're going to do some eggs and I have these. This is Calypso Coral. See, it's very light. Calypso Coral. So we'll do the, we'll do the egg dots in this one. And then we'll do this couple stripes over here. Kind of brings in the color. When I say streaky, it, it's like it's like a kid used a crayon to color, you know, because it's a watercolor pencil. So if you want the watercolor pencils to come out nice, you have to blend them with water. But I don't have stays on ink, right? So if you use water, it would kind of run with the memento ink. So instead, I'm using a blender pen. And it doesn't run. And it gets rid of the streaks with the magical solution. And we still have Calypso Coral, which combines nicely and coordinates, not combines, coordinates nicely with our paper. Okay, so that's Calypso Coral. And then I take, so saffron is, is what I call a neutral color. So saffron is just like, a, it's a really cool yellow color. It's, it's in the Subtles collection, but it really just kind of goes with everything. So we'll just do so saffron over there. And then... I'm gonna just take, let's see. Well, I'm gonna take the marker now. I'm gonna go back to the marker. And I'm just gonna do every other, every other one, every other square. Oops, opposite. Okay, that was that's also so saffron, but I used a marker. And then we're gonna take, here, we'll do this fresh freesia. And we'll do the opposite. So with the boxes I didn't color in. And that's how it's done. We're coloring our eggs. All right, we'll do the flowers and then I'll show you my projects. All right, we'll do the flower here we have. All right, mm, fresh freesia. Um, here, put the, the little dots of yellow or so saffron. And I did use a little bit of Flirty Flamingo. That's actually not one of the colors in the Dandy Designs, but it worked because it's a really nice light pink. All right. We'll do we'll do a little pale papaya too, which just, it just works. It works with these subtles. And let's see. We can do a little Calypso Coral. So notice how I'm just kind of alternating between using the marker, using the blends and using the watercolor pencils. To color with whatever you have is the bottom line. It doesn't matter what you color with. 
as long as your colors coordinate or sort of coordinate, at least some of them are going to coordinate. So that's the flowers, and then we need the granny apple green. So we'll do a light, and we'll do the light ones down here, and we'll do the dark ones for the other leaves. It doesn't take long to color. You don't have to overthink it. There you go. See how they change color a little bit as they, they dried? Well, here, we'll, I'll, do the, I'll do the butterfly while you're checking those out. Eggs, carrots. All right, there should be another carrot somewhere. There's the other carrot. And I'd put Wink Estella on all those, and then let's do... I'm just going to go ahead and color the whole thing flirty flamingo. All right, just, just to get it done, and then I'll, what I'll do is... There you go. And I'm just going to put sort of like a, a pale papaya tinge on it just to give it a little bit of more color. Okay, ready to see some projects we've been creating with the Easter Bunny so far? Yes, a great baby card. E the, yes, the pink and blue bunnies would make a great bunny card. Yes. Yes, and Be Pre loves the blends. And thank you, Betty. She's saying beautiful. All right. It is this cute stamp and punch set. All right, so here's what I did so far. So here is here is a little treat box. This is what I made earlier, and I used fresh freesia and pale papaya, just like I just showed you. I used a bunch of these little bling bling dots, and then this little shape here. Remember the lip balm holders that I taught you how to make for stocking stuffers around Christmas time? Those of you that were here, we made stocking stuffers. They're the inside of the lip balm holder. All right, just to recall, if you don't recall what the lip balm holder was, go ahead and watch that tutorial. The lip balm holder, just look up scan and cut, lip balm holder, and that's the front of one. And these are those inside shapes, and I use those on my cards and stuff. They make a great little extra layer for your, just don't throw away those scraps. And see how the Wink Estella's on there? And then you just put a box of jelly beans in these. And yes, these are still on clearance. Every single time I shop, I make sure I get a box of these. So you can put some jelly beans in there. I always make sure I get a box of these little treat boxes because they're already, they already have adhesive on them. They assemble perfectly. And all you got to do is put little layers of designer series paper on them. And then they make such a cute little Easter treat holder. All right, let me show you the cards. Okay, this card here, I used both bunnies for this card. And I used this piece of, like I said, piece of the lip balm holder, <laughs> the inside of it. I did the fresh freezer bunny. I did a couple eggs with Clipso Coral and stuff. And then I did the Balmy Blue Bunny. And I put I used a little stylish shapes die on there. This is a Granny Apple Green card background. And for, for this design and this design and my next card I'm going to show you, I used the Dandy Designs Designer Series Paper. It's free paper that you get during celebration. Can't beat that when you spend $100 during celebration. We have just added so many celebrations. Thank you, Melody. Melody's saying don't forget to like. We've just added, besides all these cool things you can get for free during celebration, we just added, and by the way, the owls cut out beautifully with the scan and cut. Check out the tutorial I did on cutting out owls with the scan and cut. But all of these things are free. We haven't run out of them as far as I know, but there's the one you get for even you spend $100. This paper is a 48 pack of paper. So it ma it's, makes great Easter cards and things. All right, last card, and then I'll show you my Easter Bunny workshop series from YouTube that I've been working on. Last card here, what I did is, and you can notice I did stuff with the birds. So this was a little balmy blue bird. This was a little so saffron bird. And this was a little extra shape I just used to stamp on there. And I did some inking with the mini, the new little mini blending brushes, just inked a little fresh freesia on the bottom of that sentiment. And where's the sentiment? It is from, well, both sentiments. Here, you are if, here, an Easter treat for you, right? That's this sentiment here. And then you're a friend like no other, that's here. And then hi. So everything I'm showing you is from this Easter Bunny stamp set. And just a, a couple of layers of paper. So I think I'll do these cards, but with a different center because we will do these cards. I'll show you how to make these in part three of my Easter Bunny workshop series. We'll actually make the card itself, the layers of the card. 
and we can use some of these parts too. But I have extra little die cuts I sent you. All right, let me show you what we've been making because I know not all, of you, not all of you are on. Like you're not, you're not checking out the other tutorials because sometimes, and not that you don't want to, but sometimes the powers that be, I guess it's, it's called artificial intelligence or whatever, they look and they say, oh, you're a person that likes my scan, brother's scan and cut videos. And then they don't show you my Easter Bunny workshop series videos. You might have only got notified tonight, but I go on YouTube like four or five times a week and you might not be getting notified of all the times I go on YouTube. So the last time I was on there, I did a wreath. I showed an unboxing of the wreath. The time before we did part two of the Easter Bunny workshop series. And I showed you how to make these little cute purses that my friend Kathy sent me and that I kind of cased and did, you know, these little paper purses. So if you missed it, you can use the exact things I just told you about today. You can use the bunnies that I just taught you how to make and put them on the bunny purses. I used the bunny punch to make these. Oh, good. I still have a Ghirardelli. My husband ate my bag of Ghirardelli caramels, and I'm still glad I put a couple in these bags. Or I wouldn't have any Ghirardelli caramels if he did. He came by and ate my whole bag of them. There wasn't that many left in his defense. So these are such cute little bunny bags. And using the bunny punch, but you can use your scan and cut. Here's the one that my friend Kathy sent me that I cased. She used a different kind of paper. And I used the dandy designs for mine. She used Petal Pink, though. Here's another one. That one has to be... It's not really quite sealed. So you can just put, like, one of your extra bunnies from the puncher or shape. This is what I was talking about, silhouette. Wouldn't that make a cute little shaker card? Cutting the hole through something and putting the little shakers behind. All right, here's the last little bunny purse that we made in part two of the Easter Bunny Workshop series. All right, next I want to show you what we made in part... That was part two. And in part one, we made these cards... And I showed you how to mask out the bunny so you can cut out your bunny or stamp onto your stamp on your bunny and then use the masking paper to make a mask so that you can push, put the grass behind the bunny. And I showed you how to color these bunnies using, again, fresh freesia and pale papaya. But I used much more pale papaya on these than I did on the ones from today, as you can see. So let's compare. Let's, let's unearth the bunny from today. And you can see there's a difference in the colors of the bunnies. Because when you use more pale papaya, right, they're both cute, but if you use more pale papaya and light fresh freezer, you'll get this effect. And I showed how to do that in part one. And we also did, made this card. It's called a designer series paper card because I use four panels of designer series paper over another panel in the back, and it really highlights the paper. Okay, now we have on part one, we also made mini sticky note holders. These, these are like little post-its that I get at the Dollar Tree, and I showed you how to cover these up. So these make great stocking stuffers. So maybe you missed part one. I want to go check that out. We made all these. And then I just wanted to show you a couple more things. This is from my friend Sharon. I love how she colored this. I love how she left the belly white. So I'll try some of this. And I think she might use Flirty Flamingo. So I think I'm going to case the way she colored her bunny for a couple of my projects. I like how she put the carrots up there. Okay. So... I just want to see if it has her address here. I can hear. I'll give her her whole name. Sharon Sweet. She's on my team. She's one of the paper chefs. But I'm going to make sure. No, I don't show her address on there. Okay, then we have a bunnies. Just because we're talking about bunnies. A card from Kathy Schmidt. Backyard Stampers. She's on YouTube. And this is, she used the carrot one. Coming up carrot, or here. Not carrot. I keep calling it carrot. Um, here. Thanks a bunch. Stamp set. And she does the rip paper technique. Okay, and then here's a little owl from Sharon with the Dandy Designs paper. And I'll show you my owls and I'll end there. If you missed the scan and cut tutorial on how to cut out those owls, the adorable owls are available during celebration. So that's how you cut out the scan and cut the owls. So check out those projects. And this is a bigger bag. And I did this tutorial called the tote bag. Mini tote. This is called the mini tote bag tutorial. This, this tutorial, and then this tutorial, I'm calling it the mini paper purse, or no, the bunny paper purse tutorial, or part two. So I hope you enjoyed these projects, got some inspiration, and that you'll give this a try with your scan and cut. Thank you for coming. That's all for now. Thank you, Donna and Terry and Tanya, Anna, Deborah. Okay, yes, you can use the color lifter to lighten the dark pumpkin pie. Yes, absolutely, Mary. 
Use the color lifter when you don't have... Yes. Definitely use the color lifter, like kind of like I did with the pencil. Absolutely. Making sure I answer all your questions. Bunny reminds me of the chocolate ones you get at the store. It does. This bunny reminds me that you could make it... Let's, let's use... You could use dark crumb cake or espresso and make a dark chocolate bunny. So I'll we'll probably try crumb cake and see how that comes out to see if we can make it look like a chocolate bunny. We'll just, we'll just see. I think early espresso might be too dark, but we're going to try it. Or I could try it with the pencils. All right. Thank you, Linda, Midge, Joy, Lala's Crafts, Terry, Anna, Sheila, Donna, Cheryl, Melody. I might not get to say thank you to all of you, but I appreciate your, all your comments. Appreciate you being here. Thanks for watching. This is The Paper Chef.